fans. You know, they must be really popular. These guys are really good, Kevin. And I like walk them. in there, and I see the cage set up, and I we're sitting down below there, spades there, Paris Hilton, and then I'm realizing, oh no, this is where they, you know, really tear each other up, and and I couldn't leave or anything. And there's like blood coming. Why out. would you want to leave? You with your friends? Uh, it was making. Uh, I was grossing me out, man. I'm not a violent guy. How long ago was this? Eight years ago. 82, 83? Eight years ago. Oh. And, um, I mean, there's blood coming out of these guys. You know what it's like. And I could, people were standing up cheering. I was sitting down. I couldn't watch because I was going to get sick. I love it. Yeah. You got to get used to watching it, I guess. So I cradle Farley and I win. But when I won with Farley, it was in front of everybody. He beat me in front of Spade and Fred Wolf. And I beat him in front of the hosts, Al Franken. Like the entire rewrite room was there. And for some reason, Alec and Kim were there. And I got him in a cradle and I pushed my forehead into his temple and you put the knee in the ribs and you just squeeze and you, it's like you constrict, like a boa constrict. And then I let him up. But it's one of those situations where you realize the moment I let this person up, because you've been in a lot of fights. We all know. You're a legendary. <laughs> I was in one fight in my life. Well, yeah, Big guys don't get into a lot of fights. You it's the small guys that are a tough. legendary barroom brawler. And I'm not going to let you get away with that this. Is true. It's like Ackroyd and you, like yeah. the, the two guys. Ackroyd is like a legendary barroom brawler. Is he? Oh, yeah. The entire OG cast were just fucking maniacs. So I let Farley up. But it's one of those situations where... and You, you got to let that, him up eventually. You can't... But you know this because you get in so many fights that there's some guys, the moment you let them up, you know they're coming up swinging. So you're better off just holding them on the ground until they just go like, I, I won't hit you if you just let me up. <laughs> So I, I'm debating what that time frame is between me and Farley. Uh, and I let him up and I go right to the night elevators to leave. It's you like, ran? Uh, quickly. Cause I know he's gonna. Come. Like you were going home to get Valium. Yes. And I put my card in. You had to use a card activated. And this, it was so futuristic then and like a, a pain in the ass. But now like anywhere to get anywhere, yeah, yeah. you have to use that card to work the elevator. And as I'm waiting for the elevators to open, <clears throat> I hear like a parade coming down the hallway and I turn and I look down the hallway and Chris is coming towards me <laughs> with his arms outstretched and his eyes rolled up into his head and he's doing like a uh, a goose step like a Nazi zombie and he's going uh, and everyone is behind him. <laughs> it's like second grade like fight, fight, oh, fight no. and they're like and then I also knew that moment, my level of popularity, the amount of people following Chris to watch the Chris. He was very likable, Chris. Yeah, but I was <laughs> unlikable. Like, you know, I'm about to get killed by Farley yeah. and I'm waiting for the elevator to open. I'm waiting for the oh, elevator to open. I'm waiting. It finally opens and it's filled with people coming down from the rainbow room in tuxedos oh, God. and in gowns. They're holding balloons, a couple of them. <laughs> there might be glitter on the floor or like confetti, yeah. like actual like – gold and silver star confetti and i get in the elevator super quick and farley takes a step towards the elevator and by the way i'm bleeding i have like oh you are i'm bleeding from the side of my face from when <laughs> i was uh cradled him and i'm bleeding <laughs> your from back my, is broken i'm bleeding from my elbows from when he was on top of me and my shirt is ripped you can see my body <laughs> i don't have my backpack i don't have my coat my notes i'm just going home to throw myself in front of a cab this is the craziest night that ever happened yeah, a little scared the heart's beating fast and i'm in there and everyone's partying it's like it's like a bukowski yeah they're novel. drunk they're, they're like back. yeah and i get in like oh my god thank god and he takes one step into the elevator and i realize i'm about to be killed in front of millionaires in tuxedos <laughs> millionaires and the, maybe the fastest i've ever thought on my feet i went oh my god that's chris farley <laughs> and all these drunken tuxedo people went, oh, my God. And he just like rolled his eyes down, realized everyone recognized him, and he backed out of the elevator. And it closed, and I went home. Wow, that was perfect thinking. Tell me about when you <laughs> wrestled Chris Farley. Well, um, you want me to just stop asking you about Farley because you're drawing a blank, and I don't want I really I don't have any stories you. about him. People do ask me about him. But How, I don't if have, I'm uh, casting a show, Weeds, okay? Yeah. And I need you haven't guy, seen Weeds. Yeah, of course I've seen it. You him. have seen it? Yeah. You're what I actually, and I'm not kissing your ass, you're actually what I like the most about the show. I really like when you're on. <laughs> That's because you know me. No, I, I, I love your character. I love the regular guy nature of the character, the way it's written. It's, it's like yeah. just a guy. It's that guy in the neighborhood that just smokes a ton of grass. But in the beginning of the show, I had a bit of a problem with it because she was this 
you know, pot dealer, but she had to like uh, sell her car and do these things. And I remember thinking to myself, as someone who has sold pot, I remember thinking, "You're a pot dealer." Yeah, I remember thinking, "She, if you're bad, if you're that bad at dealing drugs, I don't know how this show could go." But they obviously fixed it, and it's great. And we met her, my wife and I, at a benefit for an orphanage in Chad, in New York, at uh, some uh, benefit, and she was super nice and great. Yeah, yeah, she's nice. It's and really great. how did you go in? <laughs> I, here's a note to self. Never let a guest sit in the massage chair. <laughs> Jeez. And he keeps telling me no, I look I'm run relaxed. down. I'm relaxed. I know, I but I want you relaxed down. and I speaking. thought you looked a little tired from but the it, baby. But if you if you could be relaxed with, uh, you know, prolific stories. <laughs> what was the question? Did you audition? <laughs> did you go in and audition? Yeah, like I did break? audition for and, that. And how many times did they make you come in for that part? I'll tell you, when I first moved to Hollywood... I was 24, 25 years old. I had an audition for a show. And I'll tell you what it is in a minute. I had like six callbacks. And the producers looked at each other. On my last time there, they said, we're not getting any closer than this. And they seemed very happy that they found their guy. And um, I walked outside of Paramount from the office. And I looked around. And I said, well, this could be my home. This, this business is not that hard. A week goes by. I don't hear from two weeks. I don't hear from... And I get a call that they're looking at older guys to play the part. It was for uh, Ted Dance and the Cheers. <gasps> yeah. So that was... Uh, so you you went to network for Cheers. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I had like six callbacks. Just yeah. play along and say yes. Jesus. Yeah. It was so long ago. I don't remember if they went to network or not. But they, I think they just decided to go with... They started looking at Fred I bet Dwyer they're ruining that Dance. decision to this day. Oh, they got to be. They got to be. But um, otherwise, I wouldn't have been on Saturday Night Live. Part. Huh? I wouldn't have been on Saturday Night Live if I did Cheers. But anyway, so <laughs> so we. You know, I wouldn't have done nine years. <laughs> That's right. Sixty five hundred dollars a year. Yeah, forty five hundred. So, um, <clears throat> Weeds. So, um, I got the script. I read it. I thought, yeah, this. You know, I could do this character. And I go in there and I, I read it with them. It was easy. I'm sitting in. Do the, you uh, hold the sides when you audition? I do. I'm sitting in the waiting room with a bunch of other actors that I recognize. You know, like who? Uh, French Stewart was there. Were his eyes open? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he decided but, that was a weird character choice. French Stewart did an entire but the, eight like year Gilbert career Godfrey. to just close his eyes when he acted. Doesn't Gilbert Goffrey close his eyes too? Yeah, but I think that's how he is in real. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. know. I never met Gilbert. But um, but he wasn't on Third Rock from the Sun with dialogue, like just walking around with his eyes closed. That was, was a great, great character, though. That was a great character. Uh, French so, Stewart's a great guy, by the way. French Stewart. He's a real good guy. Um, so who else I auditioned there? No, for no, no, no. Who else is in the audition? I don't remember for... who else. There's, there's a lot remember. of people. See, you know, I don't know how many times I was on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. A lot of Eight comics times. know Probably exactly how many times. times. You know how many times no, I was on this there? This will be my 15th time. I thought you knew my, my record, my stats. You? Yeah. How many times was I on with Not as many as you think. Uh, 12. And even dozen. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you don't believe me? Are you right? No, I just made it up. No. I just... <laughs> But, so, um, so, French, uh, so you I can't auditioned. possibly sit here in the number one podcast in the country and go, I auditioned for Weeds. French Stewart was there. I'm like, well, who else was there? There had to have been somebody. There was a lot of people there. There was no people. No shit. They're casting you know a show. We know that Do you audition for there. shows? Yeah. You have to audition. Now, that's what your manager tell you. You say, no, that's the way you do it now. You have yeah. to audition. And when I go to the auditions, I see, I'm, like, I see Billy Baldwin. I'm, yeah, yeah. Billy Baldwin and Skeet Ulrich are on the other side of me. Yeah, see, I go in, I see like Alec Baldwin and, um, you know, Tom Hanks. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and you're auditioning for like Castaway. I'm not auditioning. Yeah. I auditioned for, for the uh, Wilson Ball in Castaway. I didn't get that. Who did get that? Um, oh, some soccer ball, volleyball. So, um, French Stewart, that's the name. So that's it. I can't get anything out of you. I, if I knew of anybody Turn else, the I would tell chair you. Off. I'm Turn the massage off. chair off. <laughs> Um, but you, you know, were with me at Pills. I think you took a Xanax. So they gave me, I got the role and we shot the pilot. And then I forgot about it. You know how you know you shoot the pilot and it goes away and turn it off. They forgot. I forgot that I had done that. And they call me like a month later and say, "Hey, uh, that show Weeds that you did, the pilot for, got picked up." Didn't you shoot that up in Santa Clarita, Valencia? Yeah, yeah. It's like a hundred degrees up there. And the scene was inside of an SUV. Yeah, and you can't run the air conditioner because of the cameras and stuff. It picks it up because of the sounds. Right? Yeah, and and uh, and know, we're I smoking like, like a pipe. Yeah. With you know, full of uh, honey rose herb, inhaling it, 110 degrees inside of an SUV. It was horrible. It was horrible. But they got picked up. And um, how they, many people on the seven. show 
do you think uh Seven. you don't have to name names out of the cast how many people Seven. do you think are regular pot smokers oh oh pot smokers seven so. <laughs> <laughs> you um, know, i would say maybe um maybe well there were none for a while but then i think one person uh do you think the subject matter like subconsciously there was a peer pressure like well you know what according to the script we're all having the best time smoking grass and suvs in valencia how come I, why don't i just fire up a heater I mean, that's how you got hugged, right? <laughs> yeah, that's how I started wrestling Farley. All of a sudden, I'm in barroom brawls. I'm wrestling Farley. I'm yeah, well, lighting up you heaters. <laughs> Are, you've never been a big pot guy. No, I don't, I don't smoke pot. Or booze. You're a white wine guy like your audience. No, I don't like white wine. I like red wine. All right. But I don't drink a lot because of that arrhythmia thing. They say if you drink too much, you'll pop back in, man. That's like, I can't even, I'm afraid to work out anymore. Did you go to college? Yeah. Where'd you go? Uh, I went to a small business school in Connecticut, Sacred Heart University. I have a degree in, a degree in marketing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And you, isn't Sacred Heart in the, well, I'm going to reference shit that you're going to go, how do you remember that? <laughs> now I'm like, I want to say interesting facts. You, know, you must know stats on like baseball and football. Well, Sacred Heart, I think, is in the independent league, the last... There's a book called The Last Amateurs by John Feinstein. Here's, here's, a, here's some... It's like uh, Sacred Heart, Colgate. It's a whole bunch of school, Army, Navy, the schools that have no uh, NCAA money affiliation. No, they have NCAA. All right. So like I said... But here's something you'll enjoy. You smoke a lot of grass? Here's something you'll enjoy, Jay. Um, I played football for a year in college at Fairfield University. I took a night course in criminology so I could qualify to play. And I played uh, a season of football as uh, starting quarterback. And kicker and punter. At 40 years old. That's the part that's, leave, <laughs> that's the part you leave out. No, but I was 21, I think. But the people thought, the other players thought I was like 26. And I was that's got to be weird to be a quarterback and punter because when you punt, it's because you couldn't get the job done as quarterback. <laughs> yeah. So you're back there waiting for a snap because of no, your own shittiness. No, it's because the front line wasn't blocking. Assholes. Yeah. Bunch of fat so songs. Get to... your knuckles off the ground and do something. <laughs> Get your knuckles. Put your hands on somebody. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if it's your own teammate. Look at the game tape. <laughs> Sorry, I had a problem. So, nine years on <laughs> SNL. What is, oh, professionally, boy. what are you most proud of? Like, what's the... My first Tonight Show spot with Johnny Carson. And it was stand up only? It was stand up. Uh, well, yeah, stand up, and then I got panel. I got couch time. So if we put you and your life into a time capsule, professional, yeah. I'm being yeah. serious. Uh, the thing you would want, like, another generation to go, this guy was fucking great, man. The, like, the thing that you would want people to see is your first Tonight Show. Yeah. I mean, for me, that was the biggest thing. Because as a comic, that's like passing your bar exam, you know. Did you, and you killed it? You killed yeah, it? Yeah, I nailed it. And then I went back behind the curtain, and Jim McCauley, who was the talent coordinator at the time, said, all right, stay here. I think Johnny's going to want to talk to you. So they came back from commercial. Johnny called me over. I came out. We sat down. He said, you're, you're, you're a funny young man. You know, and... Uh, Jimmy Stewart was hosting the... You're a funny man. Uh, what, 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 what's your name again? Uh, the blacks are really... They really the love bling. a guy like Kevin Nealon. He's very <laughs> flashy. He moves around a lot. He says, let's hear it for the ladies. Anytime you hear it for the ladies, the black audience has really enjoyed that. <laughs> you, uh, your stand-up is like... Um, like every... What season. happened to Frosty, by the way? Frosty's doing awesome. He's what's in he Long doing? Island right now. Is he an now. agent or something? Yeah, he's still my stand-up agent. And when you met him, he was just my buddy. We I did. I opened for you. I think Schenectady, it was, like, was it? Or Iowa Syracuse. State University. That was like in Syracuse, upstate New York somewhere. No, you're right. It was UMass Amherst. Close. I opened for you at University of Massachusetts. I, yes. Try, you've been telling me about my memory the whole time, and now this you're going to pull you're the wrong. fucking This is where up. you're wrong. The first time I ever met you, I opened for you at UMass Amherst. Okay, and I'm not talking about the first a time. Saturday Night Live show. It was me, then Julia Sweeney, then you, and it was in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and it was at some like University of Iowa offshoot campus. Okay. And there was a poster with our three faces on it. Oh, maybe that was and it. You it was wrote, in a gym? Matt. It was in a gym. Yes. And you, you were wrote, doing Christopher Walken. You signed Matt Stay Frosty, Kevin Nealon. Okay. <laughs> All right. You believe me now? Yeah. I believe you. I forgot. Oh. But we did work in Syracuse sometime. I don't think so. I think you got me confused with You're wrong and a homo. (laughs) I am a homo. I'm a quarter guy. Your stand-up is like all the, um, like, business books, like how to succeed. Not, you know, I'm being serious. 
Like the one, like those. You keep saying that. I'm well, because I, I, I don't want you to think I'm like. There's some yeah. like you know, give and then take away at the end of 